Boom! Why can China stage a comeback in lithography machines? Why do Western blockades repeatedly fail? Hey everyone! Today, I want to tell you a super exciting and incredibly impactful story. I, like an old martial arts master who has navigated the technological arena for many years, have witnessed the ebb and flow of countless technological trends. Remember the cold winter of 2018? When the U.S. Department of Commerce placed ZTE on the entity list and its 76-year-old founder, Ho Weigui, dragged his suitcase to the U.S. overnight for negotiations, the smoke of this unseen tech war had already begun to rise. And at the heart of this battle lies a secret chapter concerning the fate of the nation's technology. Did you know that in the tech world, there's a formidable weapon hailed as the crown jewel of chip manufacturing, the lithography machine? Its precision is a marvel of human industrial history, the entire machine has over 100,000 parts, a full 10 times more than a Boeing 787 airliner. Its accuracy requirement is even more unbelievably exaggerated, equivalent to firing a laser from the moon, 380,000 kilometers away, and precisely hitting a coin on Earth. Once, Peter Wenning, the CEO of the Dutch company ASML, arrogantly asserted in a media interview, even if we gave China the blueprints for EUV lithography machines, they wouldn't be able to build one within 10 years. Behind this statement was the West's deep skepticism about China's technological capabilities. After all, the creation of a top-tier lithography machine requires the optical lenses of Germany's Zeiss, the extreme ultraviolet light source of America's Symer the specialty materials of Japan's Shinetsu Chemical, and the collaborative efforts of over a thousand companies from more than 30 countries. This industrial miracle of global assembly, in the eyes of the West, was precisely China's weakest link, they were certain that China, lacking core technologies across the entire industrial chain, would forever only be able to sigh in vain at the machine. But they forgot that the people of this land possess an innate extreme pressure resistance gene. From the time the Soviet Union withdrew its experts, and the Chinese used abacuses to calculate the core data for the atomic bomb, to the early days of reform and opening up, when researchers in leaky laboratories not on cold steamed buns to tackle integrated circuits, to today, when a national team composed of thousands of enterprises and tens of thousands of researchers fights day and night in the laboratories of Shanghai's Zhangjiang. The West thought it had a stranglehold on China's lifeline, but it underestimated the astonishing energy that a nation with 5,000 years of civilization could unleash in desperate circumstances. And now, the plot has taken a dramatic turn. When Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, SME, S28 nanometers lithography machine achieved mass production, and when Huawei's Kirin chip shone again, this technological breakthrough battle that had lasted for more than a decade finally saw the dawn of hope. Next, let's step into this thrilling lithography machine war and see how China, in the game of blockade and counterblockade, has achieved a comeback step by step. I the pain of blockade, the Wassenaar Arrangement's tight collar. The Wassenaar Arrangement, jointly signed by Europe and the United States in 1996, was like a tight collar around the neck of China's technology. The N-2 principle hidden within this agreement held a sinister implication when Western companies launched the latest generation of chip technology, China could only obtain products that were two generations behind. This meant that while the West had already stepped into the 7 nanometers process era, China was still struggling to explore the 28 nanometers process. The West attempted to use this to lock China firmly at the bottom of the chip industry chain to maintain its precarious technological hegemony. Taking the United States as an example, its semiconductor industry has deep roots. From Bell Labs' invention of the transistor in 1947 to Intel's launch of the world's first microprocessor, the 4004, in 1971, and continuing to push the research and development of 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers processes today, the United States has always held the discourse power in chip design, manufacturing equipment, and core materials. Giants like Intel and AMD have transformed technological advantages into market monopolies by building patent barriers and dominating industry standard setting, and even politicized commercial behavior through domestic laws such as the Export Administration regulations to implement precise strikes against China. The Netherlands, relying on ASML's absolute monopoly in the field of lithography machines, has become a crucial link in the Technological Blockade Alliance. ASML's extreme ultraviolet EUV, lithography machine is hailed as the crown jewel of modern industry. Its production process involves more than 5,000 suppliers worldwide, integrating cutting-edge achievements from the United States' light source technology, Germany's optical systems, and France's precision machinery. 
An EUV lithography machine costs over $120 million, equivalent to 10 Boeing 737 aircraft, with an annual production capacity of only 55 units. Even more frustrating is that its core EUV light source technology relies entirely on the American company Symer. A ban from the U.S. Department of Commerce could immediately cause ASML to halt supplies to China. Since 2018, multiple already signed EUV orders have been unilaterally cancelled, forcing Chinese chip companies to turn to the mid to low end market. Under this choke point predicament, the development of China's semiconductor industry has been extremely difficult. Although Huawei High Silicon designed high end chips like the Kirin 9000, it fell into a no chips available situation because TSMC could not manufacture them. SMIC invested heavily in ordering EUV lithography machines but three years have passed without delivery. A large number of technology companies are like eagles with their wings tied, full of ambition but unable to act. According to statistics, China's chip imports in 2020 reached a staggering $380 billion, exceeding the scale of crude oil imports, making it the world's largest chip consumer and importer. Commentary and analysis, the West's blockade behavior, seemingly a smart move to protect its own interests, is actually a short-sighted strategy of drinking poison to quench thirst. History has long proven that the essence of technological progress is open collaboration, from the global sharing of internet protocols to the multinational cooperation of the Human Genome Project, all are examples of this. The West's attempt to suppress China's development through technological barriers has instead stimulated China's determination to hold key core technologies in its own hands. In recent years, China has launched a national system wave of tackling key chip technologies. Amex 5 nanometers etching machine broke the foreign monopoly, SMEE achieved breakthroughs in 28 nanometers lithography machines, and Huawei's Harmony OS achieved a breakthrough for domestic operating systems. This blockade not only failed to contain China but also made the world see the harm of technological hegemony, if a country is subject to others in key technologies, it is like handing over its lifeline, inevitably leading to passivity in international competition. 2. The courage to counterattack, China's research and development's desperate counteroffensive. Faced with the West's multiple blockades, China did not choose to retreat but instead chose to face the difficulties head-on, embarking on an arduous technological long march. Behind this long march is a deep resonance between national strategic will and grassroots innovation. The Chinese Academy of Sciences launched the Lifelong Dedication Plan, incorporating the tackling of lithography machines into the 14th five year plan, major special projects, and gathering the nation's top scientific research forces through a whoever can do it takes the lead mechanism, SME, with the determination of 10 years to forge a sword, has invested over 10 billion yuan in RD. In the 28 nanometers lithography machine field, and built the country's first full-chain lithography equipment production line. Furthermore, grassroots innovation forces like the Sinlight team directly targeted industry giant ASML, exploring paths for technological breakthroughs in asymmetric competition. On this smokeless battlefield, Chinese engineers are using their actions to interpret the profound meaning of serving the country through science and technology. The Extreme Optics Research Team at Harbin Institute of Technology, HIT, has an average age of only 31. This group of post 90s scientific research elites is creating a breathtaking picture of struggle. The team leader, Mr. Wang, refused a multi million dollar annual salary offer from a Silicon Valley company to return to China, monitoring equipment continuously for 72 hours wrapped in a military overcoat in an ultra clean laboratory at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Dr. Li postponed her wedding for three years, meticulously marking over 3,000 parameter adjustments in her experimental notebook, Xiao. Zhang, a researcher born after 2000, wrote Failure is the darkness before dawn when experiments failed, and finally ushered in a crucial breakthrough in the 876th experiment. They deeply understand that what they are debugging is not just precision instruments, but the technological backbone supporting national rejuvenation. Looking at the global technology landscape, the United States, relying on the innovation ecosystem built by top universities such as Stanford and MIT, has long occupied the top of the semiconductor industry chain. The optical lenses of Germany's Zeiss and the lithography machines of the Netherlands ASML have built Europe's mode of precision manufacturing. Japan's technological reserves in photoresist and etching machines have firmly established its position as the king of semiconductor materials. However, Chinese researchers, with the boldness to be the first under heaven, have pioneered new tracks in the core technology fields of lithography machines. Scientists at the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics, SAOM, 
took a different approach and spent eight years tackling the all-solid-state laser light source technology, this disruptive innovation not only reduced energy consumption by 50% and increased energy conversion efficiency to 3.42%, but also completely rewrote the century-old technological path of EUV lithography machines relying on carbon dioxide lasers. When experimental data showed that its performance fully surpassed international levels, ASML's technological monopoly myth was shattered and the global lithography machine market structure ushered in a historic turning point. This technological breakthrough battle is not only a breakthrough at the technical level but also a victory of spiritual strength. From Chen Shuesen's resolute return to China to build the two bombs, one satellite, to Huang Danian leading his team to fill the gaps in deep earth exploration technology, and to countless young researchers today dedicating themselves to tackling lithography machines, the torch of serving the country through science and technology has been passed down from generation to generation. They operate precision instruments with their calloused hands and stare intently at experimental data with their bloodshot eyes, building a new great wall in the choke point fields. This confirms the truth, when personal ideals are integrated into the overall situation of national development, and when the spirit of innovation is deeply integrated with institutional advantages, any technological blockade will eventually become a stepping stone for promoting China's leapfrog technological development, asterisk. 3. The Fruits of Comeback, China's Brilliant Achievements in Innovation After 30 years of perseverance, China has finally ushered in a moment of harvest in the field of lithography machines. In 2025, Chinese-style innovation has yielded fruitful results. HIT's laser-induced discharge plasma LDP, technology directly challenges ASML's droplet impact solution. ASML's LPP technology requires high-energy lasers to bombard liquid tin, consuming electricity like a gold-devouring beast, while China's LDP technology only needs a rare gas cloud between two electrodes, with high-voltage discharge instantly exciting plasma, reducing volume by 40%, energy consumption by 70% and cost by February 3rd. This technological advantage gives China a favorable position in the lithography machine technology competition. When SMEE announced the mass production of 28 nanometers lithography machines, the West fell silent. Although 28 nanometers is not cutting-edge technology, it occupies 83% of the global chip market. Moreover, 70% of the key components of this machine are domestically produced, and the cost is only one-third of ASML's selling price. The comeback from blueprints to the production line and then to the lithography machine is by no means accidental. The technological assault team composed of universities such as HIT, SAOM, and Tsinghua, with post-90S teams taking the lead, has created a fully independent industrial chain from materials and equipment to manufacturing. This is the technological long march of 1.4 billion people, which cannot afford to lose, and must not lose. While the West is still caught in the involution of Moore's law, China has chosen saturation rescue, with the government pouring in money, enterprises working desperately, and universities tackling key problems. Netizens put it well, the West blocks a technology, and China lights up a new branch of the tech tree. We have reason to expect a major reshuffle in the global semiconductor industry in 2026. When domestically produced EUV lithography machines emerge with a price tag of $120 million, China will once again sweep the globe with its advantage of high quality and low price. History is always surprisingly similar, high-speed rail, tunnel boring machines, space stations, the more the West blocks, the more China counterattacks. Commentary and Analysis China's comeback in the field of lithography machines is a strong testament to its technological innovation capabilities. Through independent research and development and innovation, China has not only broken through the West's technological blockade but has also achieved breakthroughs in some key technologies. The achievement of this success cannot be separated from the state's strategic support, the active investment of enterprises, and the hard work of scientific researchers. At the same time, this also provides valuable experience for the technological development of other fields in China, which is to adhere to independent innovation and follow a technological development path suitable for itself. In this battle of lithography machines, China has used its strength to prove that technological blockades can never stifle the Chinese people, they will only force a more fierce counterattack. Let us applaud Chinese technology and look forward to China creating more brilliance in its future technological journey. We hope everyone will continue to pay attention to the development of Chinese technology and cheer for China's technological progress together.